still remember the soulful conversations we had. Seated on the grass, watching the sun set as darkness established authority. Singing choruses we composed together. Obviously, you sound very much better. We sit back and stare at the sunset, waiting for a new and hopeful day. We cry out to the world and dream of a day when we will rise above the graves. I saw you today for the first time in several months quite unfortunately and painfully. I saw you in the obituary. And when I found out you died because of suicide, I cried more. I wish I could have told you this when you were alive, that there was no need for you to be depressed or stressed because you were truly blessed. You should have been my guest and let me show you how you were the best and you stood out from the best and they were all obsessed with you but they couldn't express their adoration for you because honey you were a geek and a freak socially weak and capable of joining any clique dear Wendy. You were not trendy but you violated yourself brutally when you compared yourself to others thinking that they were better than you. And while it's true that they shined on the outside, a shining soul is what they lacked. A shining soul is all you had. And I testify that your soul was pure, that you were an angel for sure, that your companionship was more intoxicating than the concussions of top brewers, that you had that sweet, magical balance between being mature and immature, that around you I felt so secure to even notice that you were insecure, dear Wendy. You were not trendy. Even when being rude and savage was a trend, you did not blend in. I remember when you said, I am not a savage, my soul is a package. I try to salvage from further damage and though it's a challenge, I try to manage. My soul is not dead, the devil can't scavenge. My soul is not dead. I hear the universe's language. Those were your words, Wendy. Then how come you were reduced to being seduced by the news to die at the peak of your youth? Because truth be told, I cannot be consoled. My tears, I cannot withhold. Your memory, I uphold. But with each memory, the pain is twofold. Your legacy is untold. But to me, your existence was worth more than all of art's gold combined. Your existence was poetic. Your personality was magnetic. Your physicality was aesthetic. Your lifestyle was ascetic. And everyone saw you to be eccentric. Except me, I saw you for what you were. Authentic, dear MD. You were just 20. But of this wretched life you'd seen plenty. As though your soul aged 90. But your face, so young, so vibrant, so lovely. Your eyes, so deep, so awake, so lively. Your persona, so true, so real, so merry. Damn it, I saw you as a visionary. So with all your wisdom, please tell me, why do you pick your home to be the cemetery? Was life so scary that you needed such an extreme sanctuary? Or was life so boring and lonely and ordinary that death became so necessary? Or perhaps you were just too much into being a stoic that the act of suicide seemed heroic? Or perhaps you just needed attention and no one gave you a mention? Or perhaps you just need a true love and all you got were cows. Or perhaps you just wanted someone to check in on you, see how you're feeling. In any case, I wish you gave life one more shot, just one more shot. You'd float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. But as for now, 
Video Bandit R.I.P.